All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Designing the Best You. Lately in my conversations with so many of you corporate professionals, even, you know, I'm even going to put it in the bucket of um, stay-at-home moms, too, and dads, part-time workers, things like that, just professionals in general, okay? And I've noticed this pattern. It's a very well-known pattern, okay? And many of you are going to recognize it. It's that running that never-ending rat race, that that hustle, even though we're trying to get away from that hustle culture, right? We're, we're, trying, we're still trying to meet these crazy deadlines where you have this list of projects that never ends, right? At home and at work, okay? We're trying to keep up with everything that our jobs throw at us. Then we come home, right? We've got our demands of our family, our spouses, our kids, the home in general. You're like, oh yeah, that needs to be fixed. Oh, the lawn needs to be mowed again. Oh yeah, right? All that different stuff, okay? Part of its life, right? And I'm well aware of that. And I have lived that life, life where it's so easy to lose track of what we want because we're on the go. We are, we are on the go, okay? And I'm going to let you in on a little secret. That's not what God designed. That's not how he designed us to live. Yes, we're designed to work. Yes, we're designed to provide. Yes, we're designed to cultivate beautiful communities and build things and create things and serve people. Yes, okay? But when chatting with these corporate professionals, you guys, okay, it turns out so many of you guys are feeling this same, what do I want to say, like same push, same like, I got to keep going, I got to keep doing, right, type things. And, and it comes down to worrying about whether your jobs are safe, right? And it stems from a fear in childhood, okay? It, it really does. And it's basically, how do I want to say this? Sorry, I'm pulling up my notes here. Um, it comes from childhood. That's the big thing. And it stems from how our parents handled situations, right? And sorry, I lost my, my notes here, but I want to make sure I have them. Oops. I just love when that happens. Um, but anyways, so we, we get that from our parents and sometimes it stinks. Sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing, right? I know in my family, it was, they were entrepreneurs, they're business owners. And the problem ended up being was we didn't know when the next meal was going to be on. I and mean, we always knew we were going to be fed. Okay. But we didn't know if we we're going to be able to do things. We didn't know if there's electricity. We didn't, we, it was just fear. And we weren't taught how to handle that fear. We weren't sat down and things weren't reviewed with us like that. And that's huge. It doesn't matter if it's this little like whisper in our heads or this loud concern, it's there and it, it shakes up our security and it, it shakes up how we feel at work, right? Am I, am I right? I mean, the, this insecurity and guys, Everyone's like, oh my gosh, the job market and 2024, and if you're listening to this later, you're probably going to laugh and be silly. Um, but, you know, we've got a big election year and a lot of stuff is going on in the political world. A lot of stuff's going on in the job market. Lots of companies in the first quarter and second quarter have just randomly laid off a lot of people. So I, I see what you guys are all going through. I realize that there's, there may be more and many more people outside of corporate professionals that are feeling the same way, which is why I said that just a few minutes ago, okay? So I'm sharing today's episode with you to offer a little break, okay? And to think about some of this from a different perspective. You guys know me, I'm always gonna offer a different perspective. I always think outside the box, okay? And in every conversation that I've had has been telling me one thing, you're all a bit unsure of what's going to be coming next. And it's pushing you into just trying to make it, just trying to survive through each and every day. I mean, right, as a mom, usually when you have young kids, you're like, can we just get to bedtime, right? Can we just get to this next thing? Can we just get to that next thing? At work, you're like, okay, that meeting's over. Okay, all right, I've got an afternoon meeting. Okay, 4.30 is coming up, right? And that's not a way to live. Now, you're going to have some days that are like that, and we all get that, right? So that's part of life. But sometimes it may feel like you're sticking with your jobs, you're sticking with your 
career path because it's out of necessity rather than genuinely wanting to be there, okay? You're not always going to like all your coworkers. You're not always going to like your boss, okay? Not everyone's always going to like you. Let's put it, let's make it real here, okay? Not everyone in your family is always going to like you, okay? Not everyone in your neighborhood's going to like you, okay? You're not always going to like the tasks and the projects that you, you do need to do, whether it's at home or at work. All right. And if you notice, I'm kind of weaving those two in today. Okay. And I just want you to know that you're not alone. And for my conversations that I've had, I've done a lot of research lately, which is why you guys don't, I mean, you'll see a lot of me out there, um, but I'm having a lot more conversations. It seems like a majority of you guys are having just a handful of common issues. You have ridiculous amount of workloads with not enough reward rewards. If any. You're just like, hey, pat on the back, good job. Um, Leaders who don't seem to be well leading, they're micromanaging, or they just keep piling papers on your desk, like here, get this done, here, get that done, here, you know, type thing. You also have this constant fear that one little tiny mistake could end your career, end your job, leave you some, I've literally heard some of you say, it's going to put me on the streets if I don't do this. Um, And then you've got the health issues that are piling up because stress kills, literally, okay? Our bodies can't handle it. We've talked about that a lot with our our nervous systems and our HPA axis just gets dysregulated. Our sleep circadian rhythms get dysregulated and off balance and things like that. Our hormones get out of whack. Our emotions just go all over the place, right? Okay, those those are the common issues that I'm hearing you guys have. And that list can go on and on and on. I just... I literally sat there and just wrote down the ones that I kept seeing and tallied them up, okay? And you know that, I don't wanna say that, that constant doubt of yourself and your abilities, you know, your God-given abilities. Guys, I wanna stop for a second here and say that each of us, and I'm speaking to myself too, um, each one of us was placed on this earth at a very specific time in a specific location, specific country, specific state, city, in a specific family at this time for a reason and given very specific gifts, opinions, thoughts for a reason. Okay, it's all part of the bigger picture. You know, but when you you constantly have that doubt, that lookout, the, um, the hypervigilance, what does that do to you, right? It steals your peace. It steals your joy. And it pushes you into survival mode. Okay, I know, y'all, I've been there most of my life, okay? Every little tiny thing that we, that happens in my family over the years, I'm like, oh oh my God, okay, I have to make sure, I gotta make sure we have enough food, I gotta make sure we have enough, you know, to eat, I gotta make sure, the same thing, sorry, gotta make sure, okay, we we have a house, okay, do we have this, 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 are the kids all set, are their emotions all good? Like, it pushes you into it. How are the businesses gonna run? How, like, all those different things. And I feel you guys, most of my life, my peace was stolen from me. Okay, so I understand what you're going through. My health was stolen from me. Relationships are stolen from me. The ability to feel things stolen. Okay, and so, and I don't say that because I don't want pity. I don't want any of that stuff. I'm working through all the things. Okay, just like I hope many of you are. And if you're not, please reach out to me. This is what I do. This is my vocation. I will do this until the day that I die, making sure that no child, whether a young child or an adult child, goes through any of the things that I ever went through in their health, in their career, in their life, okay? So what does this survival mode look like, right? We talk about it all the time. It's fight, flight, right? So seeing talented people, and every one of you is talented, so don't say this one's more talented than the next one, okay? You're not. We need it, people at every level, with every type of degree, non-degree, whatever, okay? But seeing talented people get fired for standing up for something, sharing their thoughts can make us want to play safe and curl up and just do the bare minimum or just, just do everything that our boss says, right? And when companies maybe don't they, they keep changing, which by the way, they're going to keep changing, guys. A really good company is going to keep changing, okay? There's cycles, there's investors that buy in and out, There's they're going to keep changing, okay? But when companies keep changing the rules, that's a big thing, okay? When they don't appreciate our work, and sometimes they don't know that we need our work more verbally appreciated or whatever it may be, you have to voice that too, okay? 
when bosses don't talk to us clearly or speak down to us, okay, it, it all starts to feel pointless. It makes us feel like we're worthless. We're like, well, I'm just another number, right? Our brain, what happens to our brain is it goes in this emergency state and it focuses only on then the simple tasks, what has to be done, and that's it, right? Because we want to keep ourselves out of trouble, right? How many of you guys, when you're little, you're like, I just want to stay out of trouble. I just want to, mom and dad are going to scream and yell or hit me or whatever it is. I just want to stay out of trouble. And then what happens is we don't get to pay attention to our long-term goals or dreams or aspirations. And I'll speak out of my own personal experience because I don't want to bring any client stuff into this right now um, out of respect for their privacy, if any of them are listening. But like, for example, I was someone who always wanted to set goals. I sat there and I, I wrote down, right? Who's the New Year's resolution people, right? I sat there and I wrote down them all and I made sure I was achieving all of those. And then I get upset when I didn't achieve them. Okay, but I always was meeting some kind of goal. I have a massive to-do list every single day. As I've been going through my healing journey as I'm older and heading into the second half of my life here, it's it's survival mode, okay? And I was only doing the things that had to be done. Okay, literally sometimes I put on there, took a shower. Okay, that was that's, that's something that, has to, that just has to be done, right? But it was something I was like, I have to check that off the list. I mean, how many of you guys are like that? And I wasn't, I had set long-term goals, but... I wasn't doing much to achieve those long-term goals. I wasn't dreaming big and letting God handle the stuff, the basic needs. He takes care, he takes care of the birds. They don't wonder, they chirp away all day. They always are gonna have food. They're always gonna have a place to live. They're always gonna have little friends to chirp with. And so much more, he takes care of us, okay? So, you know, maybe even Let's take it the, a little bit of the, uh, the opposite side of um, survival mode. Maybe you feel like no matter how much self-care, rest, or tasks you accomplish, you still can't seem to slow down and rest. My husband used to make fun of me in a good, in a fun way. That's, I wouldn't be able to sit down and watch a movie, a whole movie, because I had to get up and go do something. I had to be doing laundry while I was watching a movie. I had to be knitting while I was watching a movie. I had to be, I could not sit, I had to be, okay, I had to be making a list, whatever it was, I couldn't sit still and just, be, right? We're called human beings, not human doings. That's how you know you're stuck in survival mode, okay? When you're more prone to be in this flight mode, you're going to create a pattern inside of yourself, okay? Where you constantly have to be moving, right? Flight, that's movement, movement, move, 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 right? Okay, and when, and if you're not moving, I mean, how many of you guys, be honest with yourself. This is how healing starts, is being honest with yourself. When you're not moving, you feel uncomfortable. You feel lazy, right? You're like, something's going to go wrong because I'm not doing something, right? Something's not going to get accomplished because I'm not doing it. And, and it's, it's, like having, <laughs> it's like having a freight train, right? That's going at top speed, top speed. And the momentum of being in survival mode, it, you've been in that top speed for so long that it feels absolutely impossible to slow down. And you really don't want to just pull that e-brake, Okay, and come to a complete stop because that's not a safe feeling. If you guys have been in a car where you've had to jerk the, you know, brake really hard, or you're, you've been on a train, maybe you know that it's not a good feeling, and that's what happens. Okay, so when you're in that flight aspect of survival mode, I want you to recognize that and say, I need to find space. You know, think of your day to day stuff as needing to be stretched out, like. Taffy, right? When you pull taffy, it stretches, right? So pull things out, stretch them out. Take a little bit longer. Take a longer drive home, right? Stand, if you still go to the grocery stores, stand in the longest line. Take that time. Take take a little bit longer on the tasks that you do enjoy, okay? Maybe create some easy habits or rituals around things you actually have to do each day. Right? Maybe if you have to go through construction, whatever it is, go grab yourself a cup of coffee or make one at home and really enjoy it. Maybe throw in, you know, learn some a new language or something like that because you're going to Italy next year or something, right? Invite some more ease. Build on that. It's it's really the easiest thing, easiest change that we can make when it comes out of get 
comes in to comes to getting out of flight mode okay and it teaches our nervous system last week we talked a lot about our nervous system but it teaches our nervous system some really easy in some really easy ways to kind of feel safe when we're just standing still and not running okay there's no race to the finish line okay everyone's gonna be sitting in their grave until Jesus comes anyways all right there's no race there's no big prize for whoever gets to the you know five hundred billion dollar income mark okay there, there there just isn't all right so I want to offer some subtle subtle signs and then maybe less subtle signs that you're actually in that fight or flight mode more so the flight mode of survival flight of survival mode okay so this is something I know my husband and I we used to joke about and we notice in each other we've had to teach it to our kids okay you tend to eat quickly or maybe you have no appetite in the morning how many of you it's guys inhale your food right slow down you're supposed to be taking about 20 to 25 chews before you swallow seriously try it it's if you're in the flight mode you'll know when you start to count it feels like way too long for those chews okay Next one is you feel emotionally numb. You, you literally, your emotions when you were younger were suppressed. You were only allowed to be like even keel, basically. You could be happy, right? A lot of us like, you have to be happy, right? You can't be sad, you can't be angry, you can't be overwhelmed, you can't be nothing, right? Happy. Come out of your room when you're happy, right? Or you're easy to deal with, right? Maybe you talk too fast or excessively. If you find yourself when you're talking to someone and they have this like death stare or they're looking all over the place not looking at you you're probably talking too much or too fast i i like to teach people when we're doing speaking stuff is to when you're on the phone with someone or you're on a stage um, more so when you're on the phone with someone or you're in person with someone if they speak slowly you match their tone if they speak quickly you match their tone those of us from New York and Chicago and LA, we're going to talk really, really fast. Okay. That's just because the hustle and bustle, right? That, that flights, you want to stay busy. You want to stay moving. Um, but as you know, when you go to some of the slower states in the, in the United States here, or you go to on vacation, people speak slower. Okay. Because that's a part of your nervous system regulation. Another one is noise drives you absolutely freaking nuts like you just can't handle any of the little sounds okay won't go into that maybe you're always tired but you can't rest or maybe when you finally do get to rest this has been happening to me over the past couple weeks i'll lay down on the couch this has been my way of calming down at the end of the day before i get into bed i'll turn on the tv and i know i speak to you guys about like not watching tv before bed but sometimes that is you have to do that I don't want to read. I can't inhale the information. So I just kind of numb out. And maybe your heart starts like palpitating. You're not calmed down. You're like, okay, I got to get up and do it. Okay, right, that whole thing that I was talking about earlier. Okay. Maybe you feel compelled to clean and organized. And organize. I know I do. Yesterday I was like, that's, to be honest with you. I was, I didn't want, I couldn't stand the noises with the kids. I couldn't stand the dog. I couldn't stand my husband. I, and I just, I literally picked a rack and I started just like wiping and cleaning. I think I cleaned the sink like four times. Okay. But I recognize that. And sometimes you have to go through these things and you have to allow yourself to clean. Sometimes, right. We do need to clean. Okay. But if you find yourself like I have to clean, you're in that flight mode. Okay. Um, maybe you feel like you're rushed and you're not. How many of you guys, I mean, it's coming on the end of the school year here. But you're like, oh my gosh, I have to get the kids to school on time. Oh my gosh, I, I, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go. I have to get to work on time. Okay, they, they might fire you if you continually don't get to work on time um, and whatnot. Okay, I've learned to tell myself, I'm like, are they going to kick the kids out of school because they're a couple minutes late? I mean, I see parents pulling up 10, 15 minutes after school starts and dropping their kids off. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> so don't feel like you're gonna be in a rush like there really is no race if you don't make it to an appointment on time they have leeway if you don't make it to school or work on time okay you have the opportunity to explain yourself or really it's okay right it's okay no one's gonna die all right 
And, and I know all of us, like I said, I've done a bunch of these when I'm in that survival mode. Um, but think about those. Those are some of the subtle ones that you might not recognize if you're not on a healing journey already. Okay. And here's a few more I want to point out. I think it's like eight or nine of them. That shows us our nervous system is just stuck and holding us back from any advancement in our healing, in our careers, in our relationships, in our finances, in our lives. Okay. And they're huge. So um, I, ideally, I would love for you to write them down. Um, Take some time, not while you're driving, please. So the first one is anger or frustration. That's your go-to emotion, right? The noise, let's say you have noise and you're like, ah, you blow up, right? Or you've been bottling it up and then you blow up, right? Um, or you stuff it down, okay? Maybe you feel overwhelmed and resentful by all the things on your plate. A lot of times if you are a, um, an abuse or trauma survivor, you want to do it all yourself and you keep it in, but then it gets to be too much and you get overwhelmed and you become resentful because you don't know how to ask for help because you don't trust people, okay? Um, maybe that exhaustion is felt in your bones. Raise your hand for that one. That exhaustion is in your bones. You're like, can it come out? <laughs> I was telling a friend a few weeks ago, I'm like, I just want a new body and new mind. I know I will one day when Christ comes back, but like, I want it now. <laughs> But it's just, it's felt in your bones. It doesn't matter what you do or how much rest again. Okay, that's survival mode, okay? Maybe you don't feel happy to be alive. Be honest with yourself. I'm gonna be honest with you guys right now. There's a lot of times, there there was a, a really deep, dark period at the beginning of my healing, I'd say the beginning to first like third of my healing journey. I didn't feel excited about life in any way, shape or form. Anyway, it wasn't even like I could fake it till I made it. It was, I didn't feel happy. I was down, depressed, labs showed it, everything. I just didn't want to. And that's okay, all right? But you have to just recognize that that's the mode that you're in, okay? And as you start to heal, those happy days get to be more and more. And you have to remember, guys, you can't always be happy. There's a, a beautiful array. We've talked about this a few episodes ago. There's a beautiful array of emotions that you should have the opportunity to experience. Happy is just one. And you shouldn't be like it all the time. You can't have a heart rate that's constantly happy or you're dead, right? It doesn't matter if it's low or high, you're dead, right? Straight line is dead, okay? You have to do the ups and downs to stay alive, okay? Um, another one is you constantly feel, you're constantly, I hate this word, but I'm gonna use it because you guys relate to it. You're busy. You're constantly busy, but you're not accomplishing the things that you're actually supposed to, right? This goes back to like, the survival mode of I'm making sure all the basics are there, but I'm not a, I'm not making any steps towards those long-term goals or achievements or dreams, okay? Let's say you're around, here's another one. Let's say you're around a group of people, whether it be people you really know, your family, friends, um, coworkers, and you still, even though you're around people, you still feel deeply misunderstood, unsupported, and just alone. I know I've been there where I'm like, okay, I really don't feel a part of all this and why doesn't anyone understand me, okay? That's survival mode. That's flight survival mode, okay? And, you know, maybe your heart feels like it's just constantly racing. I, I deal a lot with this with um, patients who have been on medications or they're taking too much of something or they're worried and it just, it just spirals. Maybe you feel like your heart's racing, right? How many of you guys, you end up in this deep sleep if you can get to that point. Some of you guys are still at the beginning of your healing journey, but you're like in this deep sleep and you wake up and you're like, <gasps> right? And then you can't get your heart and mind to stop racing. And then you're like, I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm awake. You're like in shock. That's flight because you can't get your body to rest again and get in that parasympathetic mode, okay? Maybe you're just mentally overwhelmed, okay? And you can't even make the simplest decisions. I know when I have like my flashbacks or I'm in some of those, those modes that I just, I can't even, I can't even make dinner. I, I can't. And that's just being real. Like I just can't, but there's, let me back up. Um, we'll go to the last one here. Um, so you can't even make those simple decisions and that can be scary in your career, right? You're sitting there and you're like, someone's asked me a basic question that I, sh I, I should be able to answer. 
and I can't make the decision because if I do this and I do that and you start, you, you just overwhelmed, right? And then you make not, no decision and then you feel like you look like a fool, right? And then the last one, and these are, this is not an exhaustive list, okay? And again, I am not a licensed therapist, okay? I am a board certified holistic health practitioner. I am a certified nutritionist, okay? I do have those those certifications, those degrees, okay? But I'm not a licensed therapist, okay? These are things that I've just experienced from interviewing you guys and um, and talking to you guys and my own experiences. That's why I've compiled this list. So the last one is you feel like you need to cry, but you can't. So you're like choked up in the throat. You're like, I know I have to cry. And crying, guys, is a beautiful thing I've learned, okay? My childhood, it was like, don't cry. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? You're crying too long. <laughs> Imagine being told that you're crying too long. Um, and so you end up just stop doing that. Crying is the body's way of releasing into that parasympathetic mode, just like yawning is. It's not you're tired. It's not you're, you're extremely sad or whatever it is. I mean, you might be, but your body has to have that release. That's what it so desperately needs, Okay. And so don't be afraid to, but those, those are what I've noticed over the years and the interviewing with you guys and my own things of like, what is keeping you in that stuck mode, right? We talk about like the hidden stressors and the things that are keeping you stuck. That's, those are stressors that are keeping you stuck. Okay. And I get it because when you're at the beginning of your healing journey, guys, and just Understanding these things can be in itself overwhelming. I remember the first handful of months going to therapy um, for this specific thing that I've been going through. And I was like, I can't, I can't do anymore. This is too much. This is too much. This is too much. I mean, it, a therapy session back at the beginning would take me days to, I don't know how I want to say it, like days to recover from. I would feel exhausted because I just like let out some stuff and was just told some stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, like it made sense. But I was like, this is exhausting. And if this is what it's going to be like for years to come, this sucks. And it wasn't right. But here's the thing, guys, you were not meant to be on this earth to just be numb or just have your, your career reduced to like a series of firefighting reactive decisions. You can handle changes. We're going to have changes sometimes every day in our lives, multiple times throughout the day. Things are going to come up, okay? And you can thrive, not just survive these changes, okay? So, you know, compare some of the things that's like these feelings that you've had. I don't know where that came in my notes there. Um, but anyways, instead of stress, that survival mode pushing you around, I want you to use it to your advantage, okay? If you feel like just that immense stress or like that overwhelm, stop okay you recognize i'm just getting I'm, I'm just getting through the day and say now what do i need to do to thir to to thrive thrive that's what i was gonna say thrive thrive okay your goal is to be making and discovering and learning new things okay and you want to be doing those things on purpose not out of that survival mode that's how you're going to reach your big goals whatever your big goals are okay and and so what I wanted to pull up a quote here by Christine. I'm going to butcher her last name, but I'll, I'll put it in the show notes too. But Christine Szymanski, okay? It says, unfortunately, some have to postpone living their best life because they're in this deep pit of survival mode. And once they're able to find the strength to climb to the top, take in a deep breath, that bright light triggers one to crawl right back into the hole of false security. The cycle of rising and falling continues until one feels they deserve the light once and for all and allows it to shine on it. And every time I read that quote, it makes me cry like this at the end because I know that feeling of you're like, yes, I'm going up and then boop, nope, I want to go back and hide, right? And we're going to have some of those days. But my biggest dream for you guys is to keep looking for that light, the light of God. God's going to reach out his hand and he's going to pull you up and he's going to keep having you go forward. And he doesn't, he didn't design you to live in survival mode all the time. Okay. So 
what do you do when you're operating in that survival mode feeling and you're feeling stagnant, you're feeling stuck and you're just stressed beyond, okay? You're not thriving. So first, like I've said throughout this episode, just pause and reflect, recognize, you're like, okay, I'm here, this is happening, it sucks, I don't like this feeling, but what it does is it's, pausing and reflecting is, a, is an ally to survival mode, okay? It helps you see the invisible patterns and really confront uncomfortable questions because we have to, when you're in survival mode, you can't just go around it or push it aside or get rid of it. You have to go through it, okay? So pausing to reflect helps you to zoom out and say, hey, let's get clarity. Clarity leads to decisions. Decisions lead to action. And action opens up the door to new beginnings. So many of us were like, okay, we're gonna zoom out, we're gonna look at the bigger picture. Okay, we got some clarity. Okay, now clarity leads to decisions. And that that's that's typically where we get stuck. We're like, okay, we have a decision to make, and then we're like, ah. And then we're like, but I'm not getting anywhere. I'm stuck. I'm in the same job. Oh, I went, I got a new job, but then two months later I'm not happy again. Okay. We have to take the action, the hard action. I don't know how many times throughout most days I'm like, Hey, Vanessa, okay, come on, right? And there's there's some reflective questions that I want you to ask yourself too, and I'll put them in the show notes um, to help come out of that survival mode. It's not gonna happen overnight, guys. This is a constant process, a daily process, okay? But think of the things that I talked about earlier, those, we'll call them symptoms, but the signs that indicate that you're just getting by, okay? What are those signs for you? And then what can I fix in this situation? Some things we can't, right? But what can I think, what can I fix? And then the next thing, next one I wanna ask, but like how can I do more enjoyable work? Be grateful you have a job, but what can I do to make it more enjoyable? Can I tap my pencil? Can I do a little jam out while I'm sitting here? Movement is really good for regulating your nervous system, right? Can I go out to lunch once a week? Does that gonna get me moving? Wait, what can I do? And then what problems keep coming up with no easy fix? What are those problems that you keep experiencing? You're like, oh my gosh, like I just push it aside and I, the next time it comes around, push it aside. But what can I keep? It, it's usually the hardest things that we're pushing against that once we fix them, we have freedom, okay? And then the next thing is, what are my big career goals and what daily actions do I need to take to reach them, right? If you're in a job search, we talk about this a lot too um, in my coaching, like, hey, what do we what do we gotta do? You know, and if you're not looking at a job, you're just trying to advance in your career and you're trying to get out of the survival mode and live a better and healthier life. We talk about this too, like, what are the daily things I have to do? We talk a lot about rest, we talk about movement, we talk about nutrition, we talk about stress reduction, supplementation where needed, um, nervous system regulation, right? What do you need to do every single day, okay? And then what kind of help are you seeking out? You cannot do this alone. I'm t- You can't do it from behind a computer screen. You can't sit there and just read and read and read. I mean, you could a little bit, but it's not gonna really get you anywhere. But what help, who are you seeking out to help you, okay? And get making things better and get you unstuck and uncover those hidden stressors, okay? Transitioning from survival mode to thriving mode. It's not, I'm going to tell you right now, it is one of the hardest things I have ever had to do. Ever. (laughs) Making money has not been a problem for me. Building companies has not been a problem for me. Building my business has not been a big problem for me. But getting out of their survival mode to thriving is not a stroll in the park, okay? Especially if you're, you're trying to do it alone. I did it for a while alone and it was hard. But it does demand courage persistence, vulnerability is a huge one, and consistency, okay? So once you commit to that, getting out of survival mode, who's with me? Let's raise our hands right now, say yes, in the middle of your car or wherever you're listening, okay, or watching. Once you commit to, I'm getting out of survival mode, I am going to do it. I'm not gonna remain in it. I do recommend downloading my free tips to get out of survival mode. That link is gonna be in the show notes, okay? Change takes time. No one likes to hear it. We don't like change, first of all, and then we don't like that change takes a long time, right? But be patient and consistent. I say this over and over. Give yourself grace 
compassion, okay? And if you slip back in the survival mode, and I'm gonna tell you I do it thousands of times, okay? Sometimes within the same day. If you slip back into it, don't beat yourself up. I was literally doing it last night. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not good enough. I'm not a good mom, I'm not a good wife, I'm not, I'm a bad person, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, stop, Vanessa, stop. I literally got up from the dinner table, in the middle of dinner, and I was like, stop. And I said stop, and I got up and I went for a walk. It's time to recalibrate. Whatever you gotta do to recalibrate, and my family, my family, by the way, knows that if I do that and I go outside for a walk, it's it's what's going on inside my brain that's that needs to just reset, okay? But use it as a sign to recalibrate. I got outside and I grounded myself. I started, I cried a little bit. I looked at the trees and listened to the birds and said those things out loud, like, oh, look at those yellow flowers. Look at those white flowers. Look at that bird jumping. Look at that squirrel running across the street. Oh, do you hear? When you do that, you start activating all your senses. It does pull you out of survival mode, okay? It does. And you can, guys, and now I don't recommend doing this like in the middle of a meeting <laughs> at work, but whatever you have, you know, plan ahead. Say, hey, you know what? I might get into survival mode in a meeting. I might feel like I'm being attacked. What do I need to do to recalibrate if I can't get out of this meeting right away? Set that, set that um, plan in advance, okay? If, you, if that's something that you notice that comes up regularly, okay? But the good news is you can evolve your career from just getting by to fulfilling, from striving surviving to thriving, okay? With the right interventions, it's possible to regulate your nervous system and it does take time, but is so worth the effort, okay? That the health of your nervous system impacts <laughs> million times over the quality of your life on a day-to-day -day basis. And the earlier you begin, begin to heal, the better, because the earlier then, the, the, the more opportunity you have to actually live and not survive. So we do get to take charge of how we're responding to things in our minds, our feelings, changing our bodies, and ultimately changing the trajectory of our careers and our lives, okay? And, and we get to overcome these hidden roadblocks that we've been dealing with, our mental health, our physical health, our career health, whatever you want to call it. So if you're ready to build <laughs> that thriving nervous system and start feeling better and in calm and control and have joy and peace again, advance your career. The first thing I want you to do is download those tips, okay? And when you download those tips, here's the cool thing. You actually get to book a call too. So I want you to do that next is to book a call with me so we can get on and say, like, this is what I love doing is I love hearing you guys vent and let out your frustrations. Who else gets to do that at work, right? You don't get to do that without having a consequence. There's no consequence with me. The only consequence is we have the opportunity to work together and to heal, to heal and to heal together. Some of you guys, the things that you say, and I'm like, I'm writing that down because that was good and that's gonna help me, okay? We work together. This is the super cool thing, okay? I get to go through the struggles with you. I get to provide valuable resources, a proven system, hands-on guidance in, in supporting you, okay? And, and at the same time, the proven system is customized. There's certain things that are proven and there's other things that are customized just to you because each one of you is a very specific person who's had very specific and different experiences than the next person. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And I look forward to talking with you next week. Please go ahead and share this episode with anyone you know. Go back, make notes, and don't forget to download that tip book, downloadable for PDF, whatever you want to call it. It's my tips on how to regulate your nervous system and get out of that survival mode. And until next time, I want you to keep on designing the best you that God created and this world so desperately needs.